Welcome back. So far, we've explored a variety of special files in the new app router, such as page.tsx, layout, template, not found, and loading. In this video, we will dive into another vital part of our application, namely error handling, through a special file named error.tsx. Let's dive deeper and understand how it works. Currently, our application works perfectly fine when we navigate to localhost 3000 slash products slash one slash reviews slash one. It displays the first review for the first product. This URL maps to a file named page.tsx. In the review ID folder, rendering the page correctly in the browser. However, errors are inevitable. For instance, a failed network request trying to fetch a review could occur. Let us introduce an error scenario in our review ID page. Outside the component, we define a function getRandomInt to return a random integer between zero and count zero inclusive. Inside the component, we invoke this function, passing in two as the argument. The function will return either zero or one, which we store in a constant called random. If the return value is one, we throw a new error saying error loading review. Now back in the browser, and after refreshing a few times, an error is thrown when the random number is equal to one. Unhandled runtime error along with our error message, error loading review. This happens in development mode. Let's build our application and try the same in a production environment using npm run build and npm run start. So cancel the development server, control C, npm run build to build the application and npm run start to start the built application. Now, when we refresh on encountering the error, the browser displays application error, a server-side exception has occurred. In the terminal, we see the error message we have thrown, error loading review. As you might have guessed, this is not a good user experience. The error message doesn't help the user understand what went wrong or what to do next. Moreover, an error in a deeply nested component like review ID breaks the entire application. A better approach is to handle the error gracefully, affecting only the concern segment while keeping the rest of the application functional. That is where the error.tsx file comes into play. In the review ID folder, create a new file named error.tsx. Here we define a component called error boundary. So export default function error boundary to wrap around our page.tsx file like an error boundary. This component simply returns a message saying error in review ID. We start the dev server, npm run dev, and reload the page until we hit the error. But before we even reach the error, we see that we have a problem. Error.tsx must be a client component and the use client directive at the top of the file to resolve this issue. We've encountered this before, so let's add use client. Error boundaries have to be client components in Next.js. Reload the page a few times. And now we see error in review ID, which is the text from error.tsx. The rest of the UI remains unaffected. Ideally, this error.tsx component would have a better UI matching your application's theme, but you get the idea. And this component can also receive the error object as a prop to display more information. So we destructure error. Error is of type error. 
and we replace the hard-coded text with error.message. Back in the browser, you can see the error message is now error loading review. This is the message we threw in our component. Here is a list of what error.tsx file does in the new app router. Automatically wrap a route segment and its nested children in a React error boundary. Create error UI tailored to specific segments using the file system hierarchy to adjust granularity. Isolate errors to affected segments while keeping the rest of the application functional. And add functionality to attempt to recover from an error without a full page reload. Now that we have identified all the special files in the new app router, here is an image from the documentation that shows the component hierarchy for all the special files in a given folder. From the top, we have the layout component followed by the template component. Next, we have an error boundary component from error.tsx, which handles runtime errors. After that, we have a suspense boundary from loading.tsx. Another error boundary component from notfound.tsx, which handles the scenario when the resource is not found. And finally, we have the page component. All right, with this setup, we are better prepared to handle unexpected errors in our application. In the upcoming videos, we will dive deeper into error handling. Thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.